Greetings, Python coders. It is I, Alan D. Moore, still the author of this book, Python GUI Programming with TK Inter, from Pact Publications, available wherever fine books on GUI programming are sold. This is part 10 of our series on TK Inter Basics, and in this video, we're going to talk about binds. We're going to get you in a bind, or out of a bind, one way or the other. So before I dig into that, a few off-camera changes to the code. This is our diary application that we've been working on. Um, I have changed the open file function so that it now optionally takes a file path. And if you give it a file path, it won't open the box and prompt you for one. You'll see why we need that as we get into the code. Uh, the other change I've made here is to the save function, and I've just had it uh, take any number of positional arguments and it just eats those up and ignores them. And again, you'll see why we need that here in a little bit. So with that said, let's drop down here to the end of our application after our menu, after our functions, after everything else, and let's talk about binds. The bind method is available on any widget and it allows you to tie a callback function to an arbitrary event on whatever widget you want. So when you call it, it takes two arguments. The first one is what we call a sequence, and it's simply a way of describing the kind of event that you want. Um, it's in the form of what's well, usually an angle brackets, and then it goes in the form of modifier dash event dash detail. Okay, so modifiers would be, that's an optional thing, and it would be something like a shift key, control key, alt, uh, double for clicks, things like that. The event type would be one of about 20 different types that are built in, and that covers different kinds of mouse clicks, pressing, releasing, uh, mouse movements, entering into a widget with the mouse, leaving a widget with the mouse, keyboard keys, you know, key press, key release, um, window resizing, widget mapping, so like when a widget is put on the screen, uh, when an input gets focus or when it loses focus or things like that, all right? So there's, there's about 20 different kinds of events there. And finally, the detail portion, um, just kind of narrows it down as to which one it is. So for example, with a mouse button event, the detail would be which mouse button, 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, teen, whatever. Um, on a keyboard event, that would be which key did you press. So that's the first argument. It's called a sequence. And if that's confusing, don't worry. We'll, we'll look at it here in just a second. You'll see it. So the second argument you send to bind is a callback. Your callback function has to be able to take an argument, and that argument is going to be an event object. We won't always use that event object for anything, but it does contain some useful information, or at least useful in some circumstances. Uh, things like the widget that generated the event, um, the character, if it's a keyboard event, um, the X and Y coordinates, if it's a mouse event, things like that. Um, so. That's enough theory. Okay, well, let's actually find some events. Right, the first thing I want to show you is just a basic keyboard event bind um, on a widget. So first I'm going to need to write a callback function. So I think what we'll do is, since this is kind of a journal or diary, I'm going to have a function that will insert a signature line whenever I hit a certain key. So let's go ahead and write that function. We'll call it, uh, let's call it insert signature. Okay, and again, like I said, it's going to have to take an event object as an argument. And we will just have it insert some text into our message input. And we'll insert it at the end. And I'll just have it hard code my name. We'll say Alan D. Moore, writer of texts. I have written many 
texts of various formats. All right, so how do we bind this function to a key? So let's start with the widget that we want to bind it on. So we're going to bind it to the message input. And by binding it on this widget, that means that it's only going to happen when this widget has focus. All right? So bind angle brackets. Now it's modifier. So I'm going to say control. I want this to be control G for signature. You know, control S is usually save. Um, so we'll have it control. That's our modifier. Key is the event type, and then G is the detail. So control key G. That means when I hit control G on my keyboard, this event will fire, and we'll just give it the callback. Okay, I've got the terminal open here. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so. I'm going to focus the message input here and hit control G and you can see right there it's got my signature in there. Now if I am in category and hit control G nothing happens. Same thing with subject. I have to be here inside my message input. That's just a basic keyboard bind. So let's try another bind. Um, in a previous video, we talked about having our tree menu open up a file when we clicked on it. So let's see if we can implement that. First thing we're going to need is a callback. So I'm going to call it on tree click. It's going to take an event object. Now let's get the selected tree item. I'm going to call file tree dot selection and get zeroth because selection actually returns a list of all the things that are selected but we're only going to have one item selected so we just need to get that first item out of the list. Alright so if selected so if there is actually a selection we're going to pass that to open file selected. Now remember, so you don't think some magic is happening here, remember that on our tree view we set the IIDs to the file path. If you don't remember that, go back and rewatch the tree view episode of this series. And so when we call this selected, sorry, when we call selection, what we're getting back is a list of the IIDs that are selected. Conveniently for us, because of our design, that's the path. So, selected here is going to be a file path to a file. And I'm going to pass that to open file. And then, just to finish this off, I'm going to switch us back over to the entry pane. So, on our notebook widget, I'm going to call select zero. That way, when we open a file, we'll pop back over to the entry pane and view that. All right, so that's our callback. Now let's bind it. So I'm going to say on the file tree, bind. And I'm going to bind the double click. So that's double for our modifier. For mouse clicks, we use the term button. All right, just button, not mouse button, just button. So double button, and then the usual left mouse click is one. That's button one. If you want the right mouse button, that's usually button three. I know that seems weird, but you know mice used to have a middle button, and some of them still do. Um, so that would be two. But it's button one is our usual left click. Don't forget to end it with the angle bracket and then give it our on tree click callback. Let's give that a shot. All right, we're over here on our files list. I'm going to 
select one and double click it and you can see it open right up there so that's that's one thing about the tree view is you can't really double click an item without it actually being selected so <laughs> that's why we're using selection to find out which one we double clicked now it would be nice if that event object would tell us which one was clicked on we could work that out from the x and y coordinates of the click but I think this works a little cleaner um, just works great okay so that's how we bind an event to a specific widget but what if we want a global event so I mentioned earlier that control s is usually for save and I want to be able to use control s to save files well if we want to bind something globally we can use a different method called bind all. So I'm going to call that on the root window. It's bind all, and it takes the same two arguments. So it's going to take our sequence, which the modifier is control, it's a key, and it's the S key. So control key S, and then I'm going to call save as our callback. So remember I added to the save function the ability to just eat up any arguments that are passed in so that event arguments gonna get passed there and we just won't use it because it doesn't have anything we need in it alright let's give that a shot so here I am and I'm gonna hit control s on my keyboard and I just saved it to a <laughs> really awful file name um, if I'm not even on that screen, all right, I'm going to select one of these files and I'm going to click it again. So it doesn't matter where I'm at uh, in the application. I can be anywhere in any widget. If I hit Control S, it's going to call that save callback because we used bind all. And I don't know that you have to call that on your root window, but it kind of makes sense since it's binding the entire application. Okay, let's, let's look at a little problem in our application here. Let me show you something. So, when I open up Work Test 2, I get a warning down here that Work Test 2.txt already exists. Well, of course it already exists. I just opened it. Um, the reason we're getting that warning is because way back in an earlier video, we implemented a, a trace on the variables for subject and category so that whenever they're changed, we would get a warning if that file already exists. Well, that doesn't work so well now that we're opening files. So what we really want to do is have that bind be on the widget so that when the user is entering those names, they'll get the warning. But when the program just inserts the data, you know, from opening a file, we won't get that warning. All right, so here we have our traces that call our check file name function. And I'm just going to comment out these two. I'm going to leave the private var because we have that in the menu, and that just is going to get a little more complicated. I don't want to get into that tonight. Um, but I do want to show you how we can trigger uh, the callback function from these other two widgets. All right, so let's save that. And now let's go up to our widgets and let's recall the variable name that we gave those widgets. Oh, that's right. We didn't give them variable names, right? We took that out because we didn't need a variable name. Now I could add back a variable name there and we could bind to that variable name, but I'm going to show you a different way that we can bind to these. So we have this combo box and we have this entry and we don't have a, a variable name for them we don't have a reference for them well the way that we can do a bind on them is we can do what's called a class bind so we can actually bind to all entry objects or all combo box objects and since there's only one of each in this application that'll work fine so what we need in order to do that 
is we need to know the class name of those objects. And you say, well, that's obvious. It's entry and combo box. Ah, but we don't need the Python class name. We actually need the Tickleteak class name. Um, how do we get that? Well, there is a method we can call to get the tags. It's called bind tags, and it will show us the names we can use um, to do a bind on these classes. So if I call print ttk.entry, so we're, we're using ttk widgets, remember, and then I'm going to call bind tags. And print that out. I'm going to do the same on the combo box. And then when I run this, this should tell us. Close that. Over here in the terminal, you'll see we have some tuples with some different things in it. So we have the exclamation point entry, exclamation point combo box. We also have this capital T entry and capital T combo box. So each of these is a class name that will match this particular object. So obviously you see all that will match all objects, but we want these ones in the middle, the T entry and the T combo box. That's the ones we can use to do a class-based bind. And if you watch the styles video, you'll notice these are pretty much the class names we use in styles too. I don't think that's a coincidence. All right, so how are we going to do this? We're going to call this on a root object and we're going to say bind class and we're going to give it that class name. So T entry and then we're going to give it we're going to give it an event sequence. So I want to do this every time the user enters something on the keyboard. So the event that I want here is key release. And that will trigger as soon as the user lets up off the key. And that, that means the entry will actually be changed at that point. I think that key might actually trigger when they push it down and the entry hasn't changed yet. It's a very subtle difference, but I want it after the entry has already been changed. All right, and then finally, we're just going to give it that callback. Let's do the same. for our T combo box, key release, check file name. All right, let's run that. Okay, let's go ahead and test what happens. Now notice I loaded a file and I am not getting a warning. If I go up here and take out this two and then put it back, now you'll notice I get a warning. So. Um, that did the trick. So now it's only going to give me that warning if I'm typing in to those fields and actually entering data. Now I don't know if it'll work if I'm pasting into those fields, but that works for me. All right, the last thing I want to talk about here are custom events. So we have these built-in events, but we can just make up our own events if we want to. And we can fire them off at any point in our code and bind a callback functions to them. So this is something that may not seem to have any obvious initial use, but when we get into more complicated designs, uh, especially when we're trying to use classes and trying to use um, component design, this becomes a very powerful feature and a very useful thing. Uh, let me show you how it works. So um, let's look through our code here. All right, so I've got in my save function, at the very end, it calls populate tree view. I don't really like the way that kind of cascades from one function to the other. Um, if these were class methods, that would be an example of tight coupling. And I would much rather that the save function send out some kind of message to say it was done, and that some kind of higher up object would say, oh, I see that you're done. Now I'm going to fire this function that needs to happen after you finish. 
rather than the save function itself making that call. So here's how we can do that with custom events. So we'll comment out that populate tree view. And what we'll say is root dot event generate. So event generate allows us to have any widget um, just create its own event. And we can call it anything we want. So um, I'm going to call it file saved. Now these custom events have to have double angle brackets. That signals to TK Enter that you are creating a custom event. So I've got double angle brackets file saved. Okay, and now in order to make that call populate tree view, in our root window, I'm going to bind file saved to populate tree view. So now if this worked, I should be able to save a new file. We'll call it new file March 9. Uh, we'll give it a category of work, a date stamp, test it. Now if I save this, it should show up in our tree view. I'll show you it's not there now. Let's save it. Go to our tree view. And there it is right there. So as you can see our custom event was received and it called populate tree view. Again not something that you're going to use in a small script like this, but definitely when you go object oriented and you're writing larger applications, uh, this is super useful for a lot of things. Um, if you look at the idle source code, they actually use this to you know, allow for different keyboard mappings to different events, right? So they have all these um, custom events, um, they're also sometimes called virtual events. And then when you change your keyboard mapping, it sends that to the same custom event. So that way they can bind everything to the custom event instead of you know, the keyboard key, which could change. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, if that's confusing to you, set that aside for now. Um, it'll become important later, trust me. All right, that's all I've got to say about binds tonight. Um, this is the end of the 10th video. I know this video came out a little late and uh, I've got a lot of things going on right now. I need to kind of re-strategize and figure out the next set of content that I want to do. Uh, so it may be a little while before I get out another TK Enter video, but rest assured there are more coming. In the meantime, do feel free to ask any questions you want down in the comments. and. Uh, Check out my book if you need some more details and some more guidance. Till then, keep coding, have fun, God bless.